sexually transmitted diseases, feelings of guilt and shame, and hurt. Sometimes that go very deep and is even carried over into your marriage relationships. Blame, transference of blame we'll see sometimes actually happens by the guy that hurt you years ago or the girl that hurt you and did this and, and made you not trust. Then when you get married and you're, you marry your poor wife who had nothing to do with anything that happened 20 years ago or 10 years ago or 5 years ago, you judge her through those same eyes. Oh, he hurt me when he did that. You're going to hurt me. I can't trust you. I can't open up that area. That one I must keep protected because I was really hurt there. And how can I trust you? And, and you, they, start in the, they start in the minus. And you can't trust that girl because she went out with another guy behind your back. So your whole marriage is based on, can I trust you? Are you trustworthy? Where are you going? What did you spend that $5 on? Did you meet somebody? Because you had a bad experience during your dating years. Next slide, Matthew 7, 24, 25. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a what? Wise man who builds his house on the rock. The rain came down and the streams rose and the winds blew and beat against that house. Yes, it did not, yet it did not fall because he had the foundation on the rock. And we're saying rock 2020, our foundation that we want to do for our courtship years is going to be on Christ Jesus. On what the oldest book that is in print that has sold the most copies in the whole world, we're going to base it on that. And not just some book that's been come around in the last 10 years or less. We're going to something that's more substantial that has proven success. So with that, let's look at courtship. Okay? Courtship. And I'm laying some foundation here, and I hope I'm not boring you to tears. But uh, we're going to talk about some courtship. What is courtship? Before I get into some very interesting things that I know is really going to help some of you with some struggles that you've had by bad relationships in the past. Okay? Courtship. What is courtship? Courtship principles are God-centered and biblically based. So before you're ready to, to court somebody and you're at that place in 2020 is fastly approaching, many people already there and some will be there very soon and, and be going into this area of their life, you have to base this new direction based on God-centered, biblically-based uh, procedure. It's based on long time history of Bible versus less than a century old failure dating. The Bible gives guidance for one to one relationship between male and female. Now remember I told you there is no such word in the Bible as dating or courtship. But the scripture is per very plain that the Bible instructs us one man for one woman. Okay? And so uh, Genesis 2.18 and Genesis 2.14 2 and 24 tells us one man to one woman becomes one flesh. That means you are to look for the one person that you are to make a commitment to for life. It does not mean you have to only take the first person you get. I'm not saying that. But in the, in the process of a godly courtship, you must act in such a way that if it is a no, it does not leave behind all this pain and hurt and great difficulty in breaking apart. It, dating is kind of like this, taking two pieces of plywood and cementing them together, gluing them together, and then saying we're one. Because that's what happens when you're having, uh, you're developing a relationship with somebody, you're trying to become one with them. One with them in emotion, one with them in spirit, and one with them in soul. So now you're one. You're working on this oneness. You're kind of glued together like this. Then you find out Eh, nah. Nah, 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 Cannot, 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 cannot. And you can't breathe. I, I got to get away from this. I cannot, I cannot. So then you have to take these two pieces of plywood and you have to rip them apart. Can you rip plywood apart that's been glued together? Very hard at splinters. There's a splintering here. There's a ripping there. There's a this there. That's what happens with dating. It's very difficult. 
So you want a courtship that you're going towards each other, but you're not gluing these areas of your life so that if you must separate, you actually can still look at each other and be in the same room without embarrassment. That's godly courtship, all right? So let's read the scriptures. Genesis 2.18, slide 19. And the, Lord said, and the Lord God said, It is not good that a man should be alone. I will make him a help meet for him. One man to one woman. It does not say I'm going to make him a bunch of ladies and parade them in front of him. And you taste which one you like. And then choose. One man and one help meet. Slide 20. Therefore shall he leave his father and his mother, and he shall cleave to his wife, and they shall be what? That is the direction you had. That is the final conclusion. The final conclusion is one flesh, not the beginning starting point. One flesh is what you become after you consummate your marriage. But that is where you're heading. That's the final destination. But you do not start there. So courtship principles are completely different from dating. Dating versus courtship. Let's go on. And I'm soon going to be getting down our, getting past our basics, all right? This is to get us all on the same page. The primary distinction between dating and courtship lies in the intent of the relationship. Why are you going out with that person? You must ask yourself that question. That's the whole distinction between what you're doing. Say, I'm not dating, I'm courting. Okay, fine. You're courting them. You're going to marry that person. Well, no. Well, why are you going out with them? Do you believe God sent them to you? And this is the one that you're going to end up with? No way, I'm not going to marry them. Well then, are you planning on keeping them for a long term? Is this like forever and ever and you're going to choose your will? And you're going to make a decision? And it's going to be based on the principles and doing what you... No, 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 I'm not interested in that. Well then, why are you with that person? So you must evaluate in your own thinking process why, what is the intent, intent of this relationship. 1 Thessalonians 4, 3 and 8. It is God's will that you should be sanctified, that you should avoid sexual immorality, that each of you should learn to control his own body, and in a way that is holy and honorable. Otherwise you could say that you wouldn't mind anybody seeing you do. If you would be embarrassed doing something and somebody walked in on you, that's probably not holy. It's probably not honorable. It's probably a good gauge, all right? Not in passionate lust like the heathen who do not know God, and that in this manner, matter, no one should wrong his brother or take advantage of him. Can't say, oh, if you love me, you'll do this, you'll do that. No, you're not supposed to do that. The Lord will punish men for all such sins, as we have already told you and warned you. For God did not call us to be impure, but to live a holy life. Therefore, he who rejects his instruction, what? What does it say? Does not reject man. Who are you rejecting if you, re if you reject God's instruction about your courtship? Who are you rejecting? What does it say up there? Who do you reject? You're not rejecting Pastor Tim and Tabernacle of Joy and our stupid dating or our courtship rules. Who are you rejecting? God, who gives you his Holy Spirit. It was God who said one man, one woman, not Barbara Willoughby. It was God who said this is the best way, not Pastor Tim. So you are actually rejecting God and God will come after you. <laughs> Thank God I don't have to be the police. He's much more of a policeman than I am. He carries a lot bigger badge. Next slide. So what does this mean? What does this scripture mean? It means one, you should live a pure life that pleases God. One that you don't mind anybody looking at you, what you're doing, where you're at. 
that you're not afraid that Pastor Tim will walk up and catch you on the MRT, which, much I, which I must say, he will give us dreams and he will lead us to where you're at. There has been no one that I'm fully aware of at this point who has ever escaped.